When it comes to fighting games, I'm not exactly the most well-versed in the genre, but I'm going to do my best to explain the mechanics succinctly as I understand them. If you have any complaints, please leave them in the comments so that I may shadow ban you. You got the standard stuff here. Tapping the D-pad twice will let you dash, you can double jump, and there are light, medium, and heavy attacks. Moving backwards will additionally let you block. Something which personally is always better than a dedicated block button. Get that nonsense out of your nether realm. I know it's considered sacrilege to not use a fight stick, but I opted to use a PS1 controller. Something a straw man I fictitiously made up with fiction is surely yelling at me for in the comments, but what can you do? For what it's worth, the controller worked really well. If you're not willing to pay out the wazoo for a fight stick, it's a pretty good alternative. Plus, it was the only redeeming quality of that PS1 classic I bought years back. It's actually gonna do like this little side joke where I toss it into the trash and say, wow, well, what a what a system, right? Um, but then I remembered I tossed it like three years ago. <laughs> Don't miss it, awful system. Didn't even run Final Fantasy II properly. How do you, I'm off topic. My button usage was thus, X for light, circle for medium, and square for heavy. Triangle then, because blocking only belongs in a coward's toolkit, was delegated to the parry mechanic Melty Blood has. If you press triangle at the exact moment your enemy throws an attack, you have the opportunity to dish out a counter. This is f***ing hard to do, so I never used it. But, as one might imagine, it sets an open roof plan on the skill ceiling. Someone could be handing your ass to you on a silver platter, but if you have a free second and manage to sneak this in, it reverses the whole flow of battle. You also just take less damage if you time your button presses to your opponents regardless, so it's worth picking up the timing even if you never use the mechanic like my plebeian self. Melty Blood is all about keeping your own pace and flow up while throwing off your enemies at every opportunity you can. Mechanics like this where you can etch in a little more survivability in at every moment all fit together succinctly. On top of all this, Melty Blood includes as a feature what past fighting games considered a bug. Reverse beat. In layman's terms, animation canceling. Some attacks in this game get really handsy with the frames. To throw it back to part one, Shion's whip is still beautifully animated, but damn does it take a while to pull off. I know this might seem like it's short to people uninitiated with fighting games, but every dead frame where you can't do anything is a frame your opponent is closer to breaking your flow. Keeping a combo up in Melty Blood is rewarding, yet difficult, and some of those longer attacks, which are typically the hard-hitting linchpins of said combos, can really hinder your ability to keep it up before your foe deflates the whole mood. Like, look at this, I'm trying to pull off this combo right now, but the attack I'm using simply just has too many frames, and my opponent just jumps away. They just leave, and then they combo me back, and there's nothing I can do. All because the attack I was using had a lot of frames. Thankfully, you can cut the movie to a short by comboing those heavy hitters with a light attack of some kind. Um, typically, at least. Let's not get lost in the minutia of each character. This reverse beat animation canceling really keeps the heat on and never gives your opponent retaliation time. The kicker is, as with the parry system, it's really f***ing hard to do and timing is everything. Frame data. <laughs> what a concept. But the mechanic is by no means impossible to pull off. The footage I'm showing on screen is of a future installment, Melty Blood Actress Again, and it's the same basic concept. I'm using Actress Again and not the original Melty Blood because a character within it, C. Satsuki, is the only character in this series I actually somewhat know how to play. True story, one time I got a hit on Uni Lunar in an online match and then he called me a slur for using Wi-Fi. Not gonna say which one, but leave your guesses down below. Anywho, this is Satsuki's Down Heavy. Hold the d-pad down and using the heavy attack. And the number notation that fighting game players like to use, it's 2B, I think? I don't really like that notation. Now, I play with a controller, not a keyboard, unfortunately. And doing the mental calculations to replace B with square takes me back to algebra class. Reminds me of how the teacher would always just say, which part didn't you understand, when I didn't understand any of it. When I asked for clarification on any one specific thing, you know, when I finally nailed it down, she just said, I can't help you if you don't 
didn't get it, lol. I added that little last part as an embellishment, but that is basically what she said verbatim. I almost failed that class. So basically what I'm saying is down heavy works better on my soup brain rather than 2B. This attack by Sweet Sachin is a sweep and does pretty decent damage, but it takes a good long while to do. On top of that, the animation pushes you away from your opponent and has hella recovery frames. Both things you don't really want in the middle of a match. Shocker, I know. If someone jumps or parries out, you're as open as the Midwest and your ass is about to get dust bowled. However, with the advent of reverse beat technology, you can cancel the animation of backing up by doing a down slant heavy to trip into your foe with style. That's the easy part and you get your opponent all wibbly wobbly up. We got a good thing here, but we can go further. From here, you combo into a right down X to knock that sucker into the air. This sounds difficult, especially so soon after the first two attacks, and yeah, it kind of is, but practice does make perfect. You only got a few frame window to do this, and I know that sounds scary, but as with learning an instrument, muscle memories have the process. You will acclimate just as long as you try. At this point, your foe's flying high in the sky, unable to do anything, and open to a little one-two knockdown. Jump and neutral heavy that bitch into the ground, and just before you yourself hit the ground, double jump and repeat. It's like ping pong for keeps, or at least ping, because I can never get that damn second hit. I don't know when this became a tutorial on how to play Satsuki, but this is still a wonderful example of the mechanics I'm talking about. Reverse beat, the parry system, the fluidity of gameplay. All this is what drew thousands upon thousands to this series. That design philosophy extends all the way back to the original Melty Blood as well. This isn't yet another case of a foundation being cobbled up upon some ruins. No, the foundation of Melty Blood has always remain constant. Every character has their own niche to fulfill and each can utilize things like reverse beats in their own way. There's different combo potential for almost everyone and a different gameplay style to suit you. Yeah, you, if you'd like to actually play the game, which I would recommend. The original is a little slower. The combo potential is just as present. Not that I'm really efficient enough to show it off in my own gameplay, but like, trust me, <laughs> there are videos of it. Shiki, for instance, is a really balanced fighter. He can grab, has some decent reach with his specials, and just look at those legs. He's a good all-rounder type. It makes sense that the game wants you to try him out first. Oh, right, special attacks. Every fighting game has these, but Melty's integrates them into the system better than any I've played. Let's look at Shiki's downright attack button ability. I say attack button because using downright and any combination of X square circle asterisk on my PS1 controller asterisk will let Shiki do this little ditty where he does the anime protag knife thrust. See, Melty has three variations for each type of special attack, with the heavy naturally taking the longest to pull off, but being the most damaging. As with everything in this series, timing is paramount. You have to really gauge when and where you do these moves, otherwise it's instant retaliation. You know, upon reflection, I really do get it. I get why no one in the bulk of Melty Blood's community really cares about the plot of the game they're playing, and the gameplay's this cracked. Also, it doesn't help that a vocal minority of people really into VNs will say stuff like, if you don't read the VN, you have no right to play the game. Which is a whole other issue I don't want to get into. But basically, I don't know about you, but if someone told me such things, I would simply not read what they were telling me to read out of spite. Conversely, like, don't be a tourist. This is a spinoff of an Aroge VN. It's gonna get a little weird. It's gonna get a little kooky. If you don't like that or the fan base of that, then like a go play uni or something. That has less sultry roots, probably. Back on topic, these games, specifically Actress again, but again, going back to the original Melty Blood, have such a breath of mechanical depth. It's the only fighting game I've sunk my canines into for any significant length of time, and it still feels like I've only scratched the surface. Which is crazy, because I think I'm decent at Satsuki. I'd get stomped every online battle I take, but I think I'm good. I beat that arcade mode pretty flawlessly. Melty's main issue, from a gameplay standpoint, 
is having such a high skill ceiling with the floor to match. It's such high octane action and you really are just thrown to the wolves. Especially if you're playing online. Which is how 99% of you are going to experience it unless you and the boys like meeting up in the public restrooms regularly. And take that box. But if you stay with it, it is incredibly rewarding. I still flub it up, but when I get this Satsuki combo right, it's one of the most satisfying video game experiences I've ever had. There are a myriad of resources out there to get you up to speed if you're looking to give it a shot. It's daunting, but the game is extremely fun to play and get into. The music really helps with this too. I talked about this in the last part, so I'm not gonna harp on it too much. You all know it's great, and I would've quit trying to learn this Satsuki combo five minutes in if I wasn't absolutely grooving the entire time. On top of all this, the newest release, Type Lumina, has a pretty good built-in training mode. I prefer playing Actress again personally, I just think it has the better music, but Lumina is undoubtedly the most beginner-friendly. Even if it does have auto combos and has been patched in all kinds of wrong ways. Moral of the story, go be like Sion and try new things. If you're a fighting game player, go read a VN and vice versa to the rest of you. You'd be surprised what you can find enjoyment in. I personally didn't think I'd enjoy Melty Blood as much as I have, yet lo and behold throughout this project I have gone from casually dabbling in the game every now and again to actually playing it regularly. It's crazy what happens when you actually sincerely give things a try. I'd recommend it. It's pretty fun, it's pretty cool. One of the main reasons I made this video was to get more people into a series I enjoy. To not be the visual novel person telling others to just go read the VN, because I know that's annoying. This is off topic, but once upon a time, I had someone yelling at me incessantly, day in, day out, go play Yakuza 0. It was a constant, incessant, meandering conversation that never went anywhere. Eventually, this individual just gifted me Yakuza 0 on Steam and was like, now you have no excuse, go play it. I hated playing that game just because I was constantly told to go play it, so I know that's an awful experience. If you're trying to get people into a thing, just like casually suggest it and just that's it. That's all you need to do. You don't need to bring it up again and again. If they want to get into it, they'll get into it. If not, just like fuck them. You know, if you want to get someone in the Melty Blood, here's the real kicker. Just send them this video series. If they, if they fuck with it, that's a good sign. If not, whoo, oh well, oh well. There's like a million other people into it who you can befriend. Probably, I don't know. Go up to the Melty Blood Discord server or something. I haven't been there since July of 2021. They won't let me back since the incident. <laughs> it's real sad. But if you don't want to do anything or try new things, then there is always a third option, something I kind of alluded to earlier. Don't just send other people to this video. You yourself watch the rest of this series and this video. Regardless of gender, leave it on at all times. I want your advertising revenue. Gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> Like it, share it around, subscribe and all that cool stuff. Uh, also, Patreon.com. Ooh, uh, wow, that was the uh, that was the plug of all time. <laughs> uh, onwards with the. In terms of gameplay, there is an elephant yet undisclosed in the room. The original release of Melty Blood, functionally, really is just the bones of the system. I'm sure you can tell by the footage, but this initial version is a tad more clunky and slow in comparison to the likes of Actress again. And let's be real, that's really stretching the definition of a tad. This is gonna sound odd, but everyone moves way too humanly. Jumps have gravity instead of wonky anime logic behind them, and it feels like my fingers are submerged in sludge when I try to do a combo. I hate to make the comparison, but it kind of feels like playing Mortal Kombat. I know, I know, but the pitch forks away. It's alright as an entry level fighter, I guess, you know, for getting your bearings and all that if you've literally never played the genre before. 
And if you have, or hell, have even seen someone else play a fighter, uh, which you have if you've watched this video, congratulations, I cannot overstate how <laughs> this feels. It's strange. This game, the original release of Melty, still has the same mechanical depth of later entries, barring one or two things, of course, but it feels like an entirely different game most of the time. There are slight glimmers where it picks up and you can almost feel that oneness with your fighter that later entries provide in spades, but it's fleeting, like a rainbow in the night. I talked at length in the previous part about the betas and demos of Melty Blood. While those certainly are a step removed from even the original release, I would still consider that original release demo-like in nature. It is not the beast this series would later become. You can just stunlock your opponents infinitely, it's snoozingly easy. Baseless tangent time, I know you all love these so dearly. Half of me has to wonder if the reason for the slow and easy structure was for the sake of the VN demographic that Tsukihime itself had fostered. This is a player base buying your game primarily, at least in most cases, for the story. A player base whose only gaming experience, gaming experience, could very well be just clicking the mouse key in order to further the plot. What I'm getting at is that this original release of Melty Blood has the gloves on something fierce. Or unfierce, I suppose. I tried playing it for this video to get the authentic original experience, but only ended up playing a few routes before putting it down. It doesn't help that skipping scenes in this version takes like a really long time to do, like again, another tangent, a tangent within a tangent, but uh, I'm gonna throw this on screen right now. Look at this. I thought it froze, but it's just loading the dialogue at a normal speed. This is how slowly this is supposed to go. It's not a hardware issue. Every other game in the series runs fine, unless this one was just poorly optimized and doesn't play well on a Windows 10 or something, I don't know. Um, thankfully, there is another version of this game. Melty Blood React Final Tuned. Skipping scenes is relatively instant in this version, and more importantly to most people, the combat has seen a massive overhaul. It really is day and night. Feels like the game French Bread actually wanted to make, given that it plays in sync with pretty much every other fighting game they've ever made. Which is a good thing if you haven't picked up on that. Even the soundtrack feels crisper and the visuals glossier. I mean, just compare these fight splash screens. You can argue the soulfulness of the original, but you can't fool me. This ain't no Higurashi situation, React was how Melty Blood was meant to be played. Snappy gameplay, no clone characters, which yes, the original did have, and even the ending theme has lyrics now. I mean, really think about that. The original release of this game had an unfinished ending theme. So much for giving extra time for development, jeez. If you've never played a fighting game in your life and also want to read the story of Melty, if you know I haven't spoiled it so far with part one and later in this video, um, then I guess you could go play the original if you really wanted to. But if you have even once played a fighting game, if you've even seen someone play a fighting game, which oh, congratulations, if you've, if you've watched, watched this video, video you've seen someone play a fighting game, uh, just play React. The original is a headache by comparison, and I mean one of those patented shiki headaches. If you really, really want to, you can play the original release, as I mentioned in last part, much in the same vein as the demos for Melty Blood. As a cool little, oh, this is where the series came from, isn't that neat? You know, just as a cool little thing to do for like an hour or two, do not sit down and play this game to completion. Just play React. Play so much better. It reads so much better. It sounds so much better. Still comes in the same little fucking Tsukihime ass window when you play it, and when you full screen it, there's no option for 4x3, but it's, it's just better. It's just objectively better. I'm sorry. Um, tangent over, I'll send you back to the video. Have fun, bye. And by back to the video, I of course naturally mean the end of the video. See, this was, of course, originally going to be longer, again, probably about an hour long part, but then I had an epiphany earlier today. 
It's Evo season, and it would be pretty topical to put out a Melty Blood video around this time. More importantly, um, it's August, and I just kind of wanted to make another video. Or, at least put out another video, so, uh, sorry about the shorter runtime, y'all, but, uh, I hope it was a good quality video that you all enjoyed. Speaking of Evo, important announcement, I just wanted to wish my friend Uni Lunar the best of luck. I've seen some of the stuff he's done so far, even with the broken-ass stick, and dude is killing it. Go show him support if you can. Wonderful guy. Next up, I just want to thank my patrons. They're all wonderful people. But especially I wanted to thank Cybolt and Nameless Protag, who, for some reason I cannot comprehend, are at the highest tiers, which, oh my god, that's, wow. Uh, yeah, this is just a small little section at the end. I am dead tired, have been editing for 10 hours straight because I really wanted to get this out Saturday morning. So, you know, gotta get them views. Um, <laughs> assuming this video gets views, I don't know. I just wanted to put something out. I will see you all soon with, hopefully, the next part of this series? Hopefully. Eventually. One day. All of it's recorded, it's just a matter of editing it together. Which, the amount of free time I got is just a little hard sometimes. So I uh, thank you all for bearing with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. By the time you're seeing this, I will be fast, fast asleep. So uh, please wish me good night. Alright, y'all take care.